Hey everyone, this is Kieran. Today's exercise is looking at some calf stretches. So we're gonna go over a couple options. If you feel like your calves are feeling tight, this may be some good options for you, but sometimes muscles can also be um, feeling tight, but actually they're actually quite flexible and long. So we'll talk a little bit about that as well. So with um, feelings of tightness, tightness can be a feeling which feels like something short, but actually what could be going on is that that muscle might be a bit weak. Tightness can be a, also a protective response after an injury. So you hurt yourself, say a joint, and the muscles around brace. They become tight to try and protect the area, right, while it heals. Tightness is kind of a feeling that is partially, well, mostly really created as like a top-down thing. So there's some stretch receptors in your muscles and they perceive a stretch and then your body responds by creating a certain amount of tone or, or tightness in the muscle. You might need more tightness for um, a certain movement and less for another. For example, if I do like a quick movement like this with my hand, I need that tightness to be a bit less, but it needs to be on and off really quick. Versus like a really heavy bicep curl, I'm gonna need a really gradual building of tightness or tone. So what does all that mean? When you do a stretch, you need to consider what am I trying to get out of it? Um, we know from some of the research that, you know, roughly if you're looking to reduce the sensation of tightness plus increase the range, that a dose of say five days a week for 30 seconds for a few reps is going to be sufficient. Or you could do like two to three days a week or a minute long holds. After that, the increases seem to plateau a little bit. Um, there's not a lot of research though looking at long, long-term effects. So a lot of these studies are quite short. None of them are really looking at 12 months plus. One of them has that I know of, and in that sort of um, study, it's not a huge group, but what they found is that the muscle actually physically does start to get a bit longer, right? We add more chains of things that make up the muscle. Whereas before that, it's a tolerance to stretch that we see, as long as some other changes like increase in muscle size a little bit. Um, and some strength can come along as well in coordination. Um, with calf stretching, we've got a couple straightforward options. So I'm gonna show you how to use uh, a stair here and then a wall. Um, but then there's some other options which I'll link up around here where you wanna consider checking the flexibility of your ankle. Um, and then I've got a, a soleus sort of squatty type stretch option which I'll link up here as well, which if you guys are interested in that, um, I would check that out as well to help out with things like pronation um, or, or a bent knee ankle stretch. Um, so let's get into this option first. Um, it's nice to have a step. So you want to set up in a way where you've got some space in front of you to be able to go into it. If there's a wall here and you use the wall for your foot, that may be okay to start with, but, but depend, depending on how much tightness you have, you might find that you need to go past that wall pretty quick. So what you do is you put your foot up. Now the, the height of this is whatever is tolerable and comfortable, right? You're just looking for a sensation of a stretch. And then the other legs behind could be in front. I mean, I can even put this in front here. It just depends what's gonna give you a sense of a stretch that's tolerable. And then I just start moving forward. Right now I'm leaning forward. I could also push my hips forward. Once the stretch starts to subside a little bit, I might play around with some contractions. So if I push my foot into the step, so it's like I'm doing a gas pedal motion, I'm pushing down on the accelerator. If I do that and hold and push, push, push for about five seconds, and then push, 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 and then if I relax, it creates this sort of post-relaxation effect where there's a period of time where the muscle just relaxes a bit more. Reasons behind that could be that your body feels a bit safer could be that, okay, I created some force, I didn't hurt myself, and the body goes, ah, okay, less tension going this way, I know I can control it. That's one potential option. Um, but how long would I hang out here for? I like to do at least 60 seconds. I know that going to 90 may not result in faster increases in range in the short term, 
but I find that I get a feeling of a better stretch if I go that much longer. So I might do three sets of 90 seconds, for example. I could alternate legs as well, All right? Now, other more traditionally type stretches are gonna be the ones where you're doing against a wall like this. So good options as well. You're just again looking for that stretch sensation. If your heel's coming off the ground a bit, it's not bad as long as you're getting a sensation of a stretch, right? So I wouldn't get too sort of strict on how you're positioning as you really just want to get a sense of a stretch in this area. You can play around with those contractions as well. So you may not see it, but what I'm doing right now is I'm pushing my ball of my foot into the ground, like that gas pedal we were talking about. Push, 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 and then relaxing and I can go a little bit further, all right? So those are the two stretches I tend to give most people, but also that um, sort of pronation, soleus -y type stretch, which I linked before. Um, that's a really good option as well. I'll link it in the description as well. Um, otherwise, checking your flexibility, that's also in that same video. So this is where you do a wall test and you get uh, an application on your phone, for example, and you measure the angle of degrees in here, or you can do what other people do and they'll touch their knee to the wall and at what point can they not? And they measure the distance between their foot and the wall. So all good options. There isn't really a, a best one. It's just whatever you use, use the same one so that you know that when you remeasure, you're getting results that actually accurately tell you if you're making improvements. That's the range side of things, but then there's the perception of stretch as well, right? So what do you do if this doesn't fix your tightness? That's where you need to think about the strength element. So what can a calf do? What can that calf complex do? We've got calf raises. We've got things like lunging and squatting. We've also got things like jumping. Ironically, you'll find that if you do some strengthening exercises and we've got certain normative values, we expect people to sort of roughly get around depending on your age group. Again, I can link that down here. If you can't hit those numbers, then you know, oh, maybe it's weak. And if you strengthen the muscle up and improve its endurance, its ability to last, and then its ability to create force, you'll find that that tightness actually might go down. So that's the strength side of things and then calf raise. But then also you want to consider something like jump rope or hopping. So can you do like a really low intensity type of hopping like this? And how tolerable is that? And can you do it on one leg? Can you go sideways, forward and back? And what you'll find that as you work through that type of um, movement and build some capacity, for example, getting up to five minutes straight of that, then you'll find actually the tightness, the resting tension of it will drop quite a lot. And then your ability to do stuff will be much easier because your ability is now going to be here and things like walking and day-to-day -day stuff is going to be down here. So it lasts longer and you don't get that tightness response when it's fatigued. So hopefully you found that stuff helpful. Um, there'll definitely be some content down below for you guys to chew on if you want to dive into some other things uh, or jump into some of those other videos to get some more of the content. I figured send you there instead of rehashing it here. Um, but yeah, chronic calf tightness, very resolvable. If these things aren't fixing your problem, then maybe consider some medical reasons as well. You could always talk to your GP about that. You've got potentially uh, vascular causes for calf tightness. Sometimes you can have neurological causes for calf tightness. And then there's other sort of, um, a whole other family of neurological disorders, which is a different population. Things like uh, cerebral palsy, for example, um, where the, the tone of the muscle isn't being regulated properly by the brain. So things to think about. Um, thanks for watching, guys. If you've got any questions, ask below. And of course, I'm always open to any feedback. If you like this video, then please hit like below. Otherwise, to check out more of our content in the future, you can subscribe to our channel by clicking our logo over here. And to check out our latest video, click up here.